G'day ZKD here and welcome back for some Path of Exile action. In this video I'm going to be giving you guys a bit of a look at my work in progress build, my experimental Righteous Fire Iron Will Ball Lightning Scion. Sounds pretty edgy and uh, there's, definitely a, there's definitely a bit of an edgy twist to it, but I actually think as far as like Iron Will, Righteous Fire spellcasting goes, that's actually pretty on meta at the moment. With the way that uh, mana based casters are and the way that it just kind of feels like a bit of a drag to have to get mana working and with the state of mana leech and with Eldritch, Eldritch Battery being a little awkward and a lot of investment to get up and running nicely. Just mana based casters feel really awkward, especially when we're talking about one month races like that this character that I'm playing is in at the moment, the one month flashback hardcore race. Getting your uh, mana based caster up and running and feeling really good takes quite a long time. So I wanted to uh, I wanted to play something uh, that kind of hangs out over in the life armor section of the tree, right? Make a uh, a melee style character or a marauder style character. That was actually a spellcaster, and uh, Iron Will lets you do that. Iron Will allows you to convert your strength into spell damage modifier. So usually every five strength you get one increased physical melee damage, and uh, with the Iron Will support jam that converts that bonus into spell damage. So when you got something like 500 uh, strength, then you're getting about the about the amount of spell damage that you would get probably by hanging around up in the uh, spellcaster side of the tree. But you don't really need to pick up those actual nodes. Like you might pick up a few things that have a bit of extra strength on them, but they're probably going to be decent for you anyway. Or they're going to be like traveling nodes. As you just travel around the tree, your character grows in both life and in actual damage. So it allows you to focus on things like stacking life and armor and maybe investing in a lot of jewel nodes and things like that. So this uh, character is a little unusual se seeming, but it's uh, it's pretty it's pretty simple when you actually come down to it. I mean, this character doesn't even use any keystones whatsoever. It's uh, one of the few builds I've seen in a while that doesn't use a keystone of some description. Nearly every build gets at least one keystone, uh, but this one nothing. There's just no real keystone that you would really get with this. So it spends all of its points instead of like trying to figure out how to route to the outside sections of the tree to pick up a certain keystone. It just uh, spends most of its time kind of hanging around in the uh, Marauder section, the Jeweler section, the Templar section, and the Scion section, and even stretching out over to Ranger and Shadow. You get a lot of uh, you get a lot of kind of uh, chance to just pick up just pure pure, you know, stat nodes, which is, uh, seems to be working out well so far. This is a bit of an experimental character. So I knew that, like, Iron Will Righteous Fire characters work reasonably well, right? Like, you basically get a lot of life, you get a lot of strength, you get a lot of life regeneration, and you can convert that strength into spell damage with Iron Will, and you can convert that life and life regeneration into the ability to run Righteous Fire, which gives you more spell damage as well. And uh, that's a pretty tried and true concept. We've seen plenty of spellcasters like that. It's especially pop popular for things like Incinerate. I uh, haven't really seen much of this for Ball Lightning, though. And I actually think that as far as Iron Will builds go, Ball Lightning's not really the best choice. So that's probably the edge factor in this. The the edginess in this build is the decision to use Ball Lightning over something like uh, Incinerate or something that has less choice in excellent support gems. Because I think that's the real strength of uh, Iron Will is that it gives you an extra really nice support gem that allows you to hang around on the opposite side of the tree to where you normally would be. But at the same time, if you're playing it with a spell that has a really good wide selection of solid support gems, then Iron Will, you're kind of trading off something good for something good, rather than trading off something kind of average or non-existent for something good, if you know what I mean. So with Ball Lightning, we have a, a really nice selection of support gems. We have Echo, we have Fast Casting, we have Increased AoE, we have Slower Projectiles, we have Lightning Penetration, and then I'm trying to like, compete all of these uh, support gems together with Iron Will. Now that said, it actually seems to be working out pretty well. I'm currently at level 78, and uh, I just made the switch to Righteous Fire uh, recently. I, I, I kind of swapped into Iron Will once I had around a 350 strength, so that was like 10 levels ago or something like that. And uh, the, the, it's been pretty smooth the entire way. It was never really a struggle at any point in leveling. Nothing like crazy good, nothing like Flame Totem leveling or anything like that, but... Uh, Ball Lightning is a pretty solid skill right from when you get it at level 28, and I used it all the way from there up until, you know, oh, well, endlessly, essentially. And uh, it's been working very nicely that entire time. 
This character's also been a lot of fun to play as well. I'm really enjoying this play style. Uh, you kind of get this real run and gun feeling with ball lightning. The best way to play ball lightning is typically to uh, run with the balls as they travel, right? They travel fairly slow, especially when you're using slow projectiles. And you generally will you'll move into position and you'll, you will aim so that the ball lightning will travel through the maximum number of mobs. You'll fire it off and then you'll keep moving. Now, uh, this actually is working... Something a little I didn't really expect with this character. Initially, I had a plan that I wanted to get tons and tons of car speed on jewels and uh, try and mitigate the weakness of playing an Iron Will character, which is that you don't really have much access to car speed. Now, um, that's the plan. I'm still probably going to experiment with that as this is an experimental build, trying some new things here. But uh, I actually, at the moment, don't have much car speed. And I even dropped Echo in favor of Lightning Penetration on my 5 link. To, uh, to, to test this idea of like uh, a big, slow, hitting style ball lightning character, which is a little unusual. Most ball lightning builds you'll see will stack as much cast speed as possible, and uh, we'll use echo and maybe even fast casting, and they'll like basically just constantly channel those ball lightnings, have a big trail of them moving all at once. This uh, setup's a little a little different. I have a lot of uh, increased spell damage through Iron Will and other spell damage modifiers, uh, and I have a lot of like lightning damage and projectile damage and things like that from from passives and the jewels. And I also have a lot of more damage multipliers, you know, with things like slower projectiles and righteous fire. So my ball lightnings hit hard, and this is for a non crit build as well. They hit really hard for a non -hit, non crit build. So what's happened was I actually decided to test without Echo, which is a little a little crazy. My chat were raising their eyebrows on Twitch when I was doing this because, uh, you know, how, how often do you see these days spell builds that can use Echo that don't use Echo, right? It doesn't really make much sense not to most of the time. And yet I actually felt faster, uh, safer and stronger without using Echo because essentially I would uh, I would be rooted to the spot without much car speed uh, using Echo for longer. And it was a little dangerous being kind of rooted to the spot when I'm doing that dual cast. And the damage is, uh, you know, fairly similar. The DPS might be a little higher for single targets using Echo. But then again, Lightning Penetration, if I'm comparing these two together, which was kind of my option at the time, at least until I get a six link, the DPS for um, single targets is probably actually better with Lightning Penetration as well, because most single targets have high Lightning resistance. So this has resulted in this really interesting kind of like, a little slower feeling uh, in terms of car speed, but still really fast moving zippy character where I essentially I move around really fast and just cast one big ball lining every now and then. So you'll see as I'm kind of running through killing mobs here, I'm essentially just, you know, at every pack just casting one ball lining. It travels through them, it wrecks them, and then I move on to the next pack and recast another one. So it's kind of got this really fast feeling playstyle despite being a slow caster, right? So an Iron Will character is often going to be a little slower, right? They're slow, tanky, beefy warriors that happen to cast spells. That's kind of the idea, that's the theme behind an Iron Will character. And yet this character is moving really quickly. I'm stacking, you know, as much move speed and things like that as I can. And uh, just because I'm just doing that one single cast, instead of channel standing there and channeling tons of spells really quickly, I it's resulted in kind of like a really unique feeling playstyle that's a lot of fun. So I'm going to experiment with a few different things. I'm going to stack car speed with jewels if I can to see whether that just ends up being stronger in the long run, which it might well be. Um, but I'm also going to experiment with this idea of like a slow, heavy hitting uh, caster in, in, instead, which uh, sort of suits this Iron Will theme. And if this works out, then it could result in a, a really new, interesting, fresh feeling playstyle that I haven't really gotten with casters. Almost like the ice crash of caster builds, perhaps. Don't know if uh, Ball Lightning is going to be the best choice for that, but it feels like a solid choice because of this idea that it's a, a spell that kind of like can move slowly and you can cast slowly because it ticks really fast. Like the tick rate of Ball Lightning once every 200 milliseconds doesn't change with cast speed. There's no way of changing that. So as long as you, you know, as long as that ball lightning's there, then it's going to be ticking on enemies over and over again. And uh, if you're putting out one that does a lot of damage, then I don't know, maybe it's worked. So a few things to explore here. It's an interesting sort of uh, play style to sort of play around with here. I'm going to switch over and I'll show you guys some of my stats as they're standing at the moment and kind of what I'm doing with things. So at level 78 here, I'm sitting at 438 strength. This can go up a great deal. I can get a lot more strength on my gear. I have very limited. Uh, helmet's the only thing really that has a lot of strength on it. Uh, it's a pretty good one there. I actually picked this up for one Chaos, which I was pretty stoked about because this is uh, this doesn't look that good, right? It's 60 life, a good, a good resist roll that I happen to need. Um, and then 48 strength, which is a near perfect strength roll for a uh, armor ES helmet. So that was uh, that was a pretty nice find. But I will eventually upgrade this to a pure armor helmet. Um, Energy shield makes righteous fire degen you more, so we want to try and avoid that if possible. 
If I change out, which this is a Vile Storm call set up here, if I change out uh, Added Lightning for Increased Duration, which is a red socket, I can then use an armor-based helmet pretty easily without having spent a billion chromes. And uh, that will give us more strength, more armor, and things like that. So that'll be a, a bit of an upgrade we can do there. And uh, as you can see, I don't really have any strength on my gloves. Very low strength on my belt there could be way better. No strength, almost no armor on my uh, chest armor here. This could be way better as far as armor it goes. This doesn't even have any life on it. Um, so, and I've got only minimal strength and life on my jewelry as well. I've got this, uh, this amulet here is pretty decent in strength and life. I think I just picked that up, but, uh, the rings are a little, a little lacking there. So a great deal more strength I can get in both the tree and on gear and a great deal more armor. I'm currently sitting at with granite up, uh, 59% uh, reduction. And uh, I can also get three endurance charges, which I keep up all the time on top of that as well. So that's okay, even despite not having good armor gear yet. But that should easily get up to like 75% plus uh, mitigation as I increase and improve my gear a little further. So some, uh, some good improvements to do there. Weapons, uh, not particularly good. What would be ideal here is uh, a, an added lightning to spells. This is added fire to spells, but because I'm using wrath, which scales lightning damage, you can see it's 20% uh, more lightning damage. So having that added fire is kind of a little bit wasted. It still adds some damage, but much, much nicer to have that be added lightning. So I'm going to try and get an added lightning weapon at some point. Um, that will feel a little, that should hopefully feel a little nicer and uh, scale that damage up even further with that wrath scaling. My life regeneration with Frenzy Charges up, I'm using the Blood Dance Boots just here, which uh, I have five Frenzy Charges. I'm going to try and corrupt another one of these for some uh, plus one Frenzy Charge at some point. But um, I have 700 life regeneration with my Frenzy Charges up, which is uh, more than enough to sustain. I actually don't sustain Rush Fire. Here's a pretty interesting Rush Fire in 2.0 at the moment. Um, you can play a Rush Fire Spellcaster without, uh, without needing to sustain fully. Uh, now, I could invest in a bit more regeneration on the tree and once I get a level 20 purity of fire it will probably sustain but it's not a big deal because I keep five frenzy charges up all of the time and of course you can always use a ruby flask or a healing flask and that keeps you going as well so uh not I don't really have any problems with the fact that I don't sustain here in my hideout because I more than easily sustain uh once I'm out and about and you know as I said if I ever need to I can pop that ruby which brings me up to uh 97 percent uh, fire resistance, which get, basically gives me all of my regeneration, which is about 700%, 700 re regeneration when I'm running around, which is a huge amount of life regeneration. It's, uh, it's, a, it's about equivalent to a powerful flask. So, uh, that ends up being quite powerful. So, already I'm doing okay, like I've got 4,300 life, which this could easily go to 5,500, maybe even 6k, uh, with some more passives and better life on gear. A great deal more armor to get, and a bit more regeneration to get, and uh, all of these things so should come together pretty nicely to make a very tanky feeling character. And uh, I still have a fair way to go damage-wise, as I said, a bit more strength to get, a much better weapon to get, and that's going to all improve my damage as well, as well as hopefully getting a 6 link at some point as well. Jewels at the moment are going okay. I am eventually want to try and craft uh, jewel cast speed uh, jewels. So I'm going to be doing a lot of jewel crafting. This And this was actually part of this kind of like experiment with this build that I was doing. I wanted to really try and push jewels a lot uh, to be able to uh, sort of test this idea of using jewels in a, uh, a build that to cover its kind of weaknesses, right? As I said, iron wheel spell casters, they ha tend to hang out on this side of the tree and don't really get much cast speed. And uh, jewels, however, can kind of cover that gap, right? You can get you can get that car speed uh, where you wouldn't normally be able to get it. So you can add a lot of car speed in here, and you could add a lot of car speed in here. So I'm actually going to get about seven or eight jewels in this character. I already have one, two, three, four. Um, do I just have the four at the moment? I'm going to get this one here and this one here, and I can also stretch down and grab this one as well as grabbing that extra life and armor there. So I have a lot of jewels I can get. Been doing a little bit of jewel crafting. I have a couple ones here. This one's probably probably my nicest one, and this suits that sort of slow casting playstyle at the moment. That, that one's a huge triple damage roll there. Um, some of the other ones kind of just, you know, just a bit of cast speed, projectile damage, not particularly good. Uh, there's a double damage roll there. Not Nothing too insane. I'm using Assassin's Haze at the moment for the cast speed move speed. That could definitely be replaced with a better jewel as soon as I craft one. So at the moment, I'm just kind of, I'm waiting until I can craft some more cobalt jewels to be able to, uh, 
to be able to kind of fill those extra jewel slots up. For some reason, I've been getting all Crimson Jewels and Viridian Jewels and no Cobalt Jewels, uh, such as RNGs, I suppose. But, uh, <laughs> so, still have a good amount to get here on the tree as well. I have a lot of life I can get. I still have all that life there. I still have this life cluster here. I could potentially get High Ed Killer. Don't know if that's going to be worth it, because I already have high regeneration. Don't know if that life gain on kill would be super useful. And uh, I also have, like, another 5% life there. So heaps of life I could get. Not to mention, I could get life on uh, all of these jewel slots as well. So getting, like, 200 to 220% maximum life on the tree uh through jewels and nodes is definitely possible so you can go super super tanky with a setup like this and uh and you know and that makes a righteous fire deal more damage as well so when it comes to killing single targets you can essentially pop that righteous fire sit on top of the enemy and uh kind of position yourself so that they just in the righteous fire and then cast your ball lining and then you're getting then you're getting kind of like maximum possible damage on them degening them as well as the uh, actual ball lightning damage there so, uh, that, that, uh, I think there's still a lot of room for growth with this. I'm pretty happy with how this build's going so far. It's been a lot of fun. It's been, uh, interesting experimenting with these different setups. I'm gonna, there's still a great deal more to test with it. Uh, if you guys have any suggestions or questions about the build and how it's going thus far or where I can go with it in the future, then feel free to let me know in the comments below. Of course, I'm streaming this character over in the One Month Hardcore uh, Flashback League over on my Twitch channel. So uh, pop in if you want to see it in action live as well. And if this character goes well, if all goes to plan and it ends up being something pretty interesting, then I will, of course, produce a, uh, a full build guide for you guys at a later date. So guys, that's going to be it for now. I'm Ziggy D, and thanks for watching.